Welcome everybody, here we are looking at my vermicomposting tracking spreadsheet. And today I really thought I might just um, use this as the focus of my discussion because a lot of people have asked about or and commented about this spreadsheet when I've showed it, showed it here and there about how they feel it would be useful for them to have a similar tracking spreadsheet for their worm populations and for their bins. So I thought I might just share a little bit of what I've done in mind to see if um, it might give people ideas on how to either set up or, um, you know, configure their own to do certain things that mine does. So um, this this really goes right, right back to the very first bin that I had. Um, none of the maintenance of that bin is captured here. And it really started the day I harvested the bin that I received as a gift from someone and it was at that point I um, I broke up the population and launched off three new bins that day utilizing the the worms that came out of that one bin and then from that point on I was continuously tracking uh, the time points at which um, I would harvest eventually or when I fed actually the tracking of the feeding didn't really come into play until later so the records I have on feedings early on are a little bit sketchy but more recently I've been a lot more diligent in you know, maintaining all my records about everything I do with my bins and if you're familiar with Excel you'll notice that each column has a, a label and there's a gap in here so A, B, C, D, E, F, where's G, where's H uh, these dark little divisions between columns indicate the the presence of hidden columns so the, the columns that I'm interested in seeing I've placed this little dot a period basically just to remind me that hey if, in case I uncover those hidden columns for whatever reason if I want to restore um, my view to what I had then I can just hide the ones that don't have a dot there and I'll get back to what I'm used to seeing and the, used to what I what I really want to see normally is just um, the major highlights of any bin such as the day it launched and the day it ended. So that, that's really the only reason any of these columns are visible is because, you know, chances are there's either either, either a record of a, a populating of a new bin or the harvesting of a, a completed bin or maybe the move of the contents of a bin. Um, otherwise, all the other um, intermediate information about the bins is, is hidden once the information becomes somewhat obsolete. So... Um, or outdated or there's more relevant information about a feeding of a bin so the previous feeding information is no longer uh, important to me um, and then other things I maintain in here are um, bits of information about when I started to transition into a horizontal feeding of a bin to start encourage the you know the worms to leave the casting material um, so that the material can be harvested um, and a bunch of other stuff. Now, the the one thing that makes sharing a, a spreadsheet like this with people difficult, so I, I wouldn't just be able to just send this over to somebody as a, an attachment and say, here, go use it, because what what what's really displayed here is a bunch of um, a bunch of information that's actually calculated for us. So, um, you know, I'm not I'm not and I'm not updating this every day to say, okay, the um, you know this bin is now this many days old etc so on these are all numbers that are calculated by Microsoft Excel for us um, using formulas within each cell and the formulas are not visible it's just the the calculated value in each cell is um, visible so all these things that count the days the age of a bin or these things that count how many days it's been since the last feeding of a bin or these average numbers up here that show the average age of all my completed bins or the average um, number of feedings that bins have received over their lifetime etc a great number of these numbers that you see um, in my spreadsheet are all calculated values so um, you know within Excel you can actually go to the formulas tab and if you select this button here which says show formulas you'll no longer see the spreadsheet the way it's um, set up to be read you'll see all of the cells now include the formula rather than the data uh, the calculated results of each so at this point it becomes basically gibberish you, you know there's no really easy way unless you glance over to column DD and
and look down at row four to see what the value is there and then subtract the value that you find in cell BZ6. Um, yeah, so that, that's not really the way Excel is meant to work, but you know, in this case you can certainly see that the majority of the information in this spreadsheet is just calculated. So, you know, there is some, um, there is some interesting Excel trickery that I play in here. Not trickery, it's just, you know, familiarity with the, um, the way to set up, um, formulas to display this type of information. It's not that complicated if you, if you, um, if you have the patience to learn. There's, there's tons of information on YouTube to help a person, um, become familiar with some of these fairly simple commands that I'm using. Um, like this, this one here is a good example kind of smack in the middle of the way my spreadsheet presents itself here in the top is the, the focal point of where we are today and you know today there's nothing really happening uh, once something happens I sort of transpose um, that date into a new column and um, and then I record what happened on that day so you know I, I tend to keep the today column clear um, just as a placeholder and almost as a division to show uh, you know, everything that's historical about the bin. Um, uh, and then off to the right, maybe here, you'll see some stuff that are maybe some sort of a reminder for myself to say, hey, you know, if I'm starting to zero in on the time frame when it's going to be um, time to harvest, maybe I just start putting a little reminder out here that says, hey, maybe it's time to start thinking about doing a harvest, or maybe it's time to start thinking about setting up a horizontal migration. So, you know, on my videos, for example, you've probably heard me talk about this bin right here. This is the bin that I've um, uh, talked about a lot lately because that's the one that the pumpkin time lapse was prepared in. Um, but I did I did make mention a couple times now that maybe it's time to start setting that bin up for um, a horizontal migration. But right now there's still um, you know a lot of food in that bin down the center so I'm just going to leave that one as a center feeding zone for the time being. Um, but soon, you know, soon it'll be time to set up a horizontal migration. So now, here, for example, these two so-called sister bins, here's where, um, here's where the sister bins are. And there again, you'll, you'll see little references to see in my, in my videos. You know, one of the bins has this weird kind of a chestnut thing in it. Um, another of my bins has a cork floating around in it. So we always ch sort of check in on those objects as we encounter them to see how they're, um, how they're pro progressing in terms of the worms breaking them down. Um... And it's also, you know, some of the ways that we distinguish the bins from one another. These little funny labels that I put on stuff. But, um, you know, here, for example, you could see that the last time I did a horizontal setup, it was actually horizontal feeding number two for that bin. Um, so I had tried to move the, the worm population to one end of the bin. And then after they'd been, um, you know, kind of rallied into that area, kind of corralled over to that side, I did a flip and I moved the uh, feeding zone over to the other end of the bin and um, and now the worms are really being encouraged to move to that side of the bin so you know what all these hidden columns here I'm gonna go ahead and right click up there in the column heads after I highlighted them all so that I can apply the unhide command here right now you can see there's a great number of columns that suddenly appear <laughs> so it's all of these intermediate feedings that I hide after the the information becomes somewhat obsolete because maybe a feeding has already occurred since then, and um, so I just kind of obscure that information from view over from view over time. But if you if you ex, you know expand the entire spreadsheet to show everything, for example, let's just go all the way through and say unhide all of the columns. You know now you're going to see a tremendous amount of information spread across um, a much much wider um, grid and you know this would work fine too if you didn't mind scrolling back and forth but I do like to sort of you know get a lot of money's worth for my view I, li I like to be able to see what I'm looking at and not see a lot of other irrelevant inf information around me so um, that's why I hide a lot of the columns once the information becomes old but I don't want to delete it still want it in there so that I can use it later right so for example here's a column that gets hidden because there's no dot there right but this information about the bin having been fed once over here is actually used um, later on and I'll show you where so if you scroll all the way to the right I have this little 
cell right here, which is counting the number of feedings that occur for any one of my bins throughout its life. So um, the way that that's accomplished is um, using the command, here I'll show you, if you double click in that cell, now it will actually show you the contents of that cell as far as the formula that's in the cell instead of the, the calculated value. So <clears throat> what you can do, what you could do is what I'm doing here, which is it's really doing the count if command. So it's, um, it's looking across a certain range within the spreadsheet. In this case, it's the, it's the blue outlined section that you can see going all the way over to the left. So it's looking all the way over to the left to look for any occurrences of a certain string of text. And in this case, what it's looking for is the, the three letters FED. So if anywhere out there, it finds, it encounters, you know, the reference to something having been fed, it's going to do a count. It's going to count them, right? One, two, three, four, five, da, 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 da. So all the way across, it's going to count every occurrence of the word fed in row 26 of the spreadsheet. And once it does, it's going to pl um, plant that value right in here. It's the number 17. And we can, you know, we can validate that. We can just cross, roll across and we could say, hey, the most recent feeding was um, back on the 29th of January. And um, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and then it's populated. So there you go. That shows how that bin was fed 17 times so far. And um, and we're just letting Excel do all the counting for us. Um, so you get the idea. You can even see here too, right? So this is where we take that value of the number of feedings. And all we're doing is we're dividing it by the number of days that have elapsed, the age, the age of the bin. So how many, how many days between feedings on average um, is calculated here. So the formula really just does a division of, um, you know, divide uh, the number of days elapsed by the number of feedings that have occurred to give you the average number of days that have elapsed between each feeding. I didn't want this to be a very long video. I just wanted to give some people a, a high level view of, you know, how I've got this set up, the type of information I'm tracking, how I track it. And that's, that's about it for today. I just hope everyone finds this interesting, as interesting as I do, because I think it's fascinating. I love, I love using Excel to do stuff like this, to, um, to let my mind focus on more interesting things. <laughs> let Excel do all the mundane addition, subtraction, division of uh, the information I uh, collect. And all I got to do is be diligent about collecting the information and keeping it accurate. So, um, yeah, I think this is fun stuff. So, you know, whether you use Excel or some free spreadsheet that's out there, maybe something that's part of OpenOffice or um, uh, or maybe even you use one of the, the free spreadsheets online like Google Documents or Google Sheets or whatever it's called. Um, most of these capabilities, even the formulas that I've been showing are readily available in those online spreadsheet systems as well. So if you've always thought to yourself how handy something like this would be and, um, you know, you've always been discouraged from doing it, I encourage you to give it a try. You know, start start to put something simple out there, at least list what you've got and start recording some of the information in whatever way you feel comfortable. And then um, and then start challenging yourself. Challenge, challenge yourself to um, learn how to use the, the today command or challenge yourself how to um, use a, a command that subtracts values between two cells or teach yourself how to use the count um, functions. Um, a lot of cool stuff that Excel can do for you as long as you take the two or three minutes uh, to learn how a, a particular command works. And every time you learn something you're gonna you know start growing a thirst for the next bit of juicy information. So all right everyone thanks for watching I appreciate your company and if you enjoyed the video like always please give me a thumbs up I always appreciate that and then um and then hopefully we'll see you back here again soon. Thanks a lot take care have a great day bye now.